QP, uh, its members, its officers, its staff have been uh, grappling with the problems of contracting out and privatization for at least two decades. What has changed in the last few years, however, is that the corporate community and conservative politicians have, have stepped up the intensity with which they've been pursuing uh, those goals. As a result uh, of the fact that they see a, a whole vast uh, uncharted, uh, uncharted uh, continent of opportunities for profit, uh, contracting out and privatization have emerged as very major issues for most sectors of our membership and uh, in almost uh, all uh, jurisdictions and indeed in every province. And so we have had to step up the fight right across Canada against these two phenomena. CUPE is the largest union in Canada, numbering more than 300,000 members. The scope of work done by CUPE members is panoramic. Virtually every service available to the public is delivered in some part by the women and men in CUPE. Contracting out will drastically curb these services and will affect the livelihood of a vast array of individuals who make these services possible. We have nothing against people working. It's understandable that people want work, but not at the expense of everybody else. Now the contractors are working and the blue-collar workers are out of a job. I know what I'm talking about. I'm not the only blue-collar worker in this situation. There's more than a thousand of us. In 1986, out of a thousand temporary workers, there were maybe 500 who got some work. And for how long? For 16, 17 or 20 weeks tops. Contracting out occurs in a variety of ways. Shifts in the workplace, for example, the introduction of technological change, can be used as a pretext for contracting out. Often the replacement is subtle, eliminating jobs one or two at a time. Many of our clerical jobs are now being contracted out. And rather than replacing the clerk typist, it's cheaper to bring in someone from office overload, uh, Kelly girl, whatever, to, to do the job rather than to hire a, a regular employee. In other situations, such as at the CBC, job loss is more extensive and obvious. What uh, contracting out means to uh, 1,600 people that have lost jobs here at the CBC in the last two years is that they, uh, they're moving outside. They're trying to find work. Some of them are finding work. But that work is, uh, is uh, without security. They don't know whether they're going to go to work the next day. They don't know whether the business that they're, they're in is going to be there the next day. They have no benefits. They, have, uh, they do not have the luxury of a, of a pension plan or, or uh, health care uh, benefits or, or uh, a dental plan or, or any of the other benefits that are afforded to, to uh, employees of the CBC. Even jobs which a few years ago seemed immune to contracting out are now being affected. Oh, no, sorry. I think we're really just at the beginning of taking on a fight against contracting out and privatization. I think workers like library workers are only just beginning to recognize the threat that it could pose to them. It's something that has been seen in the past as a problem that affects cleaners, that affects outside municipal workers, but libraries. I mean, nobody thought that library workers would ever be affected by technological change, much less contracting out. But it's a very, very real threat for us right now. And I think especially women are thinking about it a lot more because of our fight for equal pay. Contracting out and privatization can undermine that fight like just about nothing else can. The fact is that every job is potentially threatened by contracting out. Every service is at risk. We have lost uh, transporting our garbage from our transfer station into the dumps. We have lost, for example, uh, snow removal, uh, manhole covers, or we clean the manhole covers. We have lost uh, paving. 
we have lost a certain amount of job of uh, sewer uh, repairs and uh, all kinds of jobs. While contracting out is cleverly promoted as being in the interests of the community, the truth is that the public stands to lose as much as QP members. The direct effect of contracting out is a lowering of both the amount and quality of services to the public. In cities, services have really deteriorated. Not only is work contracted out, but managers have also abdicated responsibility for the quality of work. It's easier for them to hand over responsibility to contractors than to supervise the work themselves. So the contractors make a quick buck, and the managers don't have to supervise the workers because they're under the care of the contractors. It's impossible to supervise the contractors themselves. You can't follow them from job to job. There's no control over contractors like there is over employees, so the quality of services goes down. The effect of contracting out on the quality of service can best be appreciated by looking at some specific examples. The Durham Public School Board contracted out custodial services for a number of years. The people who worked for the contractor were paid minimum wage, received no benefits, and were subject to frequent layoffs. Because the contractor skimped on supplies, they were also constantly frustrated by the impossibility of doing their jobs well. I worked 10 years for the contractor. Uh, the um, equipment was not all that good. Uh, half the time it was broke. Uh, the people that worked here that they had hired um, maybe were here today and gone tomorrow. And maybe in a month we had six different people working. Uh, the contractor is there to make money and uh, he expects us people to carry on and, and clean the school with, uh, let's say, a, a, a can of Ajax and a sponge versus we have a storage room uh, supplied by the board with all kinds of equipment that permits us to keep the school standards up to the cleaningest that's required. It does exist, General. And I am going to bring it to you. It's simply a matter of time. You don't have any more time, George. Sir? It's over. Stand by, 49. Line to the next. At the CBC, the impact on the quality of service takes a different form. Contracting out of the CBC is not only the loss of, of uh, 1,600 jobs in the last two years by highly proficient Canadian employees, uh, but it's also a loss of Canadian cultural identity and a loss of sovereignty for uh, the Canadian people. School bus service is very important to the community. Parents are concerned about safety and count on the school bus drivers to look out for their children and transport them punctually. This unionized driver is one of a dwindling minority. Most school bus service in this region is now contracted out. The non-union drivers are paid $4.50, $5 and $6 an hour. They have no benefits or job security. The school board's motive is cutting costs. Instead, it has cut service. I think the safety factor goes down. Uh, when a charter company is handling the runs, they usually have several different bus drivers, rarely the same one for a week at a time. And the kids, don't like it and also there's a a rapport that the bus driver sets up and if they notice like I've had kids on my bus that are diabetics and such like this and and the parents only expect to have to tell the bus driver once whereas if the bus drivers keep changing you just can't keep up with this sort of thing Jeff Rose has come to talk to members of the union's airline division about the effects of privatization Privatization is contracting out on a grand scale. In the airline industry, it has already resulted in the cutting of both in-flight service and communities served. And the chairman of Air Canada has stated his desire to privatize the entire Crown Corporation. We've got uh, thousands of members in Air Canada, for example, and privatization threatens Air Canada 
uh, more directly possibly than, than any other group uh, that we represent in our airline division. How aware are the members, do you think? The number one concern, of course, is job security for our members. They're reducing um, jet service to a lot of the smaller um, cities and now using the Dash 7s and the Dash 8s to, to service them. And of course, that, that means that you know, for Air Canada, the, the loss of the routes would mean that, you know, flight attendants and uh, wouldn't, as many flight attendants wouldn't be needed, and of course it would mean a layoff. One of the quickest ways to get a smaller working pool, especially in a, in a large corporation, is privatization. Because the first thing that people look to do is streamline. What we find across the country is that we're most successful in defending our members' job security in the context of our campaigns against privatization and contracting out, when we, quite rightly, link our campaigns to the preservation of service, either service, which would be cut completely, or the preservation of the quality of service that's given to the public. That's what's at stake just as much as our jobs and just as much as the quality of our working lives is the quality of service to the public. The people who work here at the Pickering Nuclear Station are members of the largest QP local in the country. Their job, the delivery of electrical power, is of critical importance to the functioning of the province. Pickering is a massive nuclear-powered complex. The safety of those inside the plant and the community at large depends on the skill of the people who work here. That skill ranges from preventing major accidents to routine checking of personal radiation levels. Come closer. Two, one, zero, turn, please. Measure back. Lean back. Two, one, zero, pass through, please. When Ontario Hydro began contracting out, the local undertook a province-wide tour to gather information on its impact. 2,000 jobs had already been lost, and the local was facing the loss of an additional 4,000 jobs over the next few years. Larry Katz, the union's national coordinator on contracting out and privatization, has come to discuss the findings of the tour. Can you tell me a little bit of what you learned when you did your provincial tour to collect information on contracting out? Uh, we found situations where the contractors simply weren't trained in the, the job, in the safety procedures for the job, and in fact they were, they were killing themselves uh, by virtue of not having the training. Uh, during the time of the tour there were two fatalities attributed to contractors. Uh, simply because they didn't know the proper work procedures. The nuclear stations were of particular concern to us because the, the front line of safety within the nuclear industry is the extensive training that our membership are given to work in the nuclear industry. The major concern that we unraveled as we went through this tour was we found that contractors were being brought into the nuclear plants with virtually no training and let loose to work in the plant setting. I think a lot of people were shocked by the information as far as contract splitting and you know it's local a lot of its local issues that local management has done and uh, maybe the guy at the top of the ladder doesn't know about it. I don't think they actually believe some of that was actually going on and when it was pointed out to them as actual examples and they checked them out they were surprised themselves. What are the various ways that you use this information after you met with the membership after you tabulated the data, how is it useful? How is it useful? We use the information to explain that the experiences that those people have been having mm -hmm. were experiences shared by the members in total, mm -hmm. and uh, it became very valuable in terms of raising the consciousness around the issue, especially prior to our last set of negotiations in 1985. And when the push came to shove, our members fell in behind us and we got the vote we needed to, to get the contract we wanted. So our membership is very well aware now of the contracting out and we, as soon as a contractor comes on site, a lot of the chief stewards are called right away by the members and there are eyes in the field and the people are very, very aware of it and uh, they're keeping a close eye on it. Until now, jobs lost to contracting out and privatization have occurred mainly through attrition. This in itself represents a significant loss of union jobs. In order to maintain existing jobs and services and gain back those already lost, 
locals will have to actively campaign against contracting out. Successful strategies applicable to all sectors have been developed by a number of locals and the National Union. Si on prend un plan d'action type, là, la première a des typical choses, plan of action is based on a number of steps. The first is to educate the members about the extent to which they have come to accept contracting out as an irreversible reality. It's also necessary for the local to establish a contracting out committee that will take the initiative. It's also very important to educate the public because people generally are ignorant of the range of services we provide. So you need to have a campaign directed at the public that informs them about the different kinds of work we do. After the publicity campaign, the next step is to gather accurate information on the extent of the problem, how many contractors there are, how many members we've lost, in other words, a detailed report on the situation. Using this information, you can then prepare good, strong clauses to take to the bargaining table. That's a typical plan. These officers of Toronto Local 43 regularly lobby the municipal government with creative proposals, such as an increase in garbage recycling operations, intended to improve services to the public and curb the tide of contracting out. The ultimate goal is to obtain provisions in collective agreements which prohibit the contracting out of services. I think the improvement of the collective agreement language should be primary to a point where the best clause obviously is an absolute no contracting out clause but if you can't achieve that then achieve the next best thing and to be vigilant on the workplace <coughs> at all the t all times in addition i think it also requires a massive membership education program so that the members are aware of the kind of things that lead to contracting out the methods that management use to contract out because they do it piecemeal, little bit by little bit, and next thing you know, you're losing all kinds of jobs. There is a natural alliance between the public and the men and women in CUPE. In an attempt to convince the public that their interests are not allied, employers portray CUPE members as overpaid and unproductive. But the truth is that the public loses quality service in direct proportion to jobs lost by CUPE members. We have the knowledge that we have the citizens that we service uh, with us if we tell our story properly. And I think one of the ways of doing that is to, to um, reach out to the, the citizens and to coalitions and to tell them, uh, hey, we're your neighbors and, and we work for you. We're the ones that um, take the snow away uh, during a snowstorm and, and we're the ones that take care of your children. Uh, we're the ones that nurse you. And if we tell that story to the public, I'm, I think it can be turned around. The key is to be patient. Don't try and do everything at once. Do your homework. Don't make the mistake of thinking that a public campaign can work without the involvement of the members. And don't think that simply a mobilization of the members can be effective without a public campaign. You have to think of the whole picture. In a fight like this, you're not going after a single item like a night shift bonus. You're fighting for something bigger and you're fighting to win. You have to use every means available to achieve a victory. Because if you begin your fight and you launch a public campaign and you don't follow through, it's going to be a very long time before you can go back to the public and start again. Contracting out and privatization put social services on the auction block. Neither the people of CUPE nor the public want to live in a society where quality of life is sold to the lowest bidder. There are very few issues that are more important than this one for us as trade unionists. What we're talking about is the whole conception of society as one of a caring society and a compassionate society that provides equal access to needed services for people and quality services to people that need those services. There's no compromise possible on an issue like that. What uh, running these services for profit means is that they just become part of the marketplace. Instead, we represent a way of life for Canadians that has uh, been the, uh, the prevailing way of life for the last 40 years and that we're determined for the sake of the people of this country to defend.